This video was made possible by Skillshare by being one of the first 1,000 people to sign up at skl.sh slash hai8, you will get two months of Skillshare for 99 cents. In January 1992, the Evergreen Ever Laurel set sail from the United Kingdom and headed due east. It carried the normal things cargo ships carry — textiles, electronics, food, and rubber ducks. I have no idea what the animator is doing because I was of course referring to Hong Kong, United Kingdom. I'm also no fun at parties. The ducks and other bath toys were manufactured in bordering China and then brought to Hong Kong, one of the world's largest ports, to be shipped to Tacoma, Washington, and they were partially successful at this because the ducks made it to here, just south of the Alaskan Aleutian Islands, before the Ever Laurel encountered a storm. In the huge waves, the massive cargo ship rolled 40 degrees to one side, and, as the old saying goes, rolling your ship 40 degrees to the side is bad, so 12 containers fell off into the icy waters below. In one of those containers were those rubber ducks—29,000 of them. Rubber ducks are made of rubber, which is waterproof. Now, pretty much every duck in the world has a hole in the bottom, and most rubber ducks do too, except for these. It was just a choice made in manufacturing. Because of that, these ducks would never take on water like normal rubber ducks and therefore floated forever. Wait, never mind, that's a stupid idea. About a year after that North Pacific storm, something unremarkable happened. Four rubber ducks washed ashore in Sitka, Alaska. Then more washed ashore in Japan. Then more appeared again in Alaska. Small numbers were also found on beaches in Indonesia, Australia, New Zealand, and South America. Discoveries of the toys then slowed down after 1996. Discoveries of new continents also slowed down after 1996, but that's probably unrelated. By this time, scientists were keenly following the movements of these ducks. You see, it's fairly difficult to actually track the ocean's currents. You can drop a buoy, but a single buoy can't verify the movements of all the 26 quintillion gallons of water in the world's oceans. Scientists have created models that predict how currents flow, but it's difficult to prove their predictions. The normal method to measure current is just to release 1,000 or so bottles with messages in them, but with those, only some make it to shore, and only some of those get found, and only some of those get reported to those that release them. In the Pacific, for example, only about 2% of all drift bottles ever released are found and reported. Just to summarize then, a higher proportion of people are able to find and report a tiny glass bottle from the world's largest ocean than are able to find and follow my Twitter account. Those bottles may be salty from their float, but I'm saltier. Those ducks, however, were sweet ocean current trackers because there were just so many of them. No scientist could ethically dump 29,000 rubber ducks into the world's oceans. After all, humans already dump 8 million tons of plastic into the oceans each year. That's more than the weight of seven football fields combined. Since this container just happened to release its cargo, however, they might as well use the data. An oceanographer named Curtis Ebsmeyer therefore started making predictions based off his ocean current model of where and when the ducks would make landfall. And then, when they did, his model was proven. One of his boldest predictions was that the ducks would make their way north, through the Arctic ice, and into the Atlantic. This would explain why the ducks stopped making landfall in significant numbers after 1996, and, as it turned out, this did indeed happen, with the first ducks in the Atlantic being retrieved in Canada in 2003, then subsequently in New England, Iceland, and the UK. Now, this current data was so valuable that there was a $100 reward to anyone who found and reported the location of a duck verified from that original container. Nowadays, however, these ducks are so popular that they have been purchased for up to $1,000 at auction. From that one lost container, these ducks are now spread out all around the world, still floating across our oceans. From time to time, they still wash ashore, and if you happen to find one, you could be the world's next thousandaire. If you do find one of these ducks, I know exactly what you should do with your newfound fortune. You should invest in yourself by signing up for Skillshare. Skillshare has over 19,000 classes on anything from drawing birds to advanced Python programming. If there's a skill you want to learn, there's a good chance that Skillshare will have a class on it. If you want to learn animation so you can make videos, like I know a lot of you want to do, they even have a course on animation by the senior motion graphics designer of Kurzgesagt. The best news is that you won't have to spend too much of your rubber duck fortune because by going to skl.sh slash hai8 and being one of the first 1,000 to sign up, you will get two months of Skillshare premium for 99 cents.